My name is Rajesh Bishendale. I am the uh, software development manager um, at uh, AWS uh, for the MWA open source team. I am Shubham Mehta, senior product manager for Amazon MWA and primarily work with the open source team for upstream contribution to Apache Airflow. Thank you, Shubham. And today we're going to talk about uh, scaling AI workloads with uh, Apache Airflow. And our journey in terms of, you know, folks, the customers that we've spoken to and what we've learned along the way in terms of what people are using out there and what the industry is using out there in the industry's journey. So our first graph here is a recent report from McKinsey that kind of tells a story over the last several years uh, of the a industry's AI journey. Uh, with the earlier part of that journey being sort of more focused on the analytical AI growth and not not stagnant, but you know there's some incrementals that's happening there. And along comes you know just last year there was this small company OpenAI that had this tool called ChatGPT that you know that resulted in a fairly large shift to where we see today about 72 percent of organizations as of today that have at least one or two business functions that are fully vested into AI. And that's, a com and that's more so a heavier growth on the generative side of AI. And uh, you're looking at some cost savings in terms of you know, the service industry or you know, reduction in HR type environments and then revenue increases from a product development standpoint with the utilization and the kind of indoctrination of generative AI and analytical AI. And what are some of these industries? So first off we have, and I'll give some examples to some of the organizations that, uh, that we've looked at through this, through this research. So first off you have the banks and there's about, I would say more than 50% of the banks, the Bank of America, RBC, that are vested into AI utilizing some form of AI for analytical data processing or you know, decision making. Second, we have security. I'll talk about this case study a little bit later in the presentation. And this is a company called Jumio that, is that specializes in identification, verification, biometrics analysis. And we'll talk about some of the you know, clients, partners that they work with. Secondary health sciences, predominantly focused around analytical AI, a company called C2I Genomics that will utilize, uh, that would use AI to identify gene sequence markers in either early cancer detection for patients or monitoring you know, the cancer treatments and looking for you know, cases and instances of remission or anything potentially getting worse. And lastly, I'm gonna reference a company called Aurora that specializes in, that utilizes AI that specializes in driverless vehicles. So you know, being able to do real-time uh, traffic analysis and uh, detection and being able to basically navigate you through the roads without a driver behind the wheel. And what's one of the, the, the biggest driving factor in which we looked at these organizations and you know, their impact to AI, the biggest commonality that we saw there was the utilization of airflow and their data and their pipeline management and their journey that they've gone through with that. Now that you know like where AI is adding value and how different industries are making use of AI. We want to give you a brief overview of what ML lifecycle is. So what you're seeing here, the loop you're seeing here, that from data collection to model training to model monitoring and back again, this is what the core of any AI project is. This is what makes the core of any AI ML operations. But each of these steps in the model training pipeline in the ML lifecycle, they come with their own challenges. Data quality is one of the key ones, but there are challenges with too many models that you end up with when you're doing hyperparameter tuning. You also end up with issues like model performance issues due to data drift. But, and each of these challenges, while they are solvable, we are going to look deeper into what are these challenges. That's what Rajesh will cover. And then I'll come in at the end and share good news on how you can solve these challenges with Apache Airflow and make your ML life cycle much better in, in production. So, I mean, in the whole ML ops cycle, there's a lot of, you know, potential, there's a lot of room for issues, a lot of room for errors. I'm just gonna cover four very common items. And you probably heard this if you attended any of the earlier sessions on ML ops and some of the challenges that they've had. So first off, we're gonna start with data wrangling. 
I know that everyone likes to, you know, collect data and clean data and uh, try to get it all in order and making sure that it's the right thing um, that you're doing. But honest to God, it's kind of redundant. It's kind of repetitive. And in its nature, it is a bottleneck in the process. It is stage one in order to, you know, drive the building of that uh, model. But it can have a massive effect on an organization if we don't know what we're collecting, how we're collecting it, and how we want to assess that. So you're, I and mean, we're talking data collection from either, you know, customer raw customer data or data that's being collected from applications themselves. The second item here is the manual, is the model training grind. So your data scientists and your data engineers going through this loop of basically preparing data, building out these models, and then deploying these models. This is a rinse and repeat situation for these group of individuals. Again, I would say that this is another bottleneck in the whole cycle of things. If you don't get this right, your end result is going to have a huge impact and it's a lot vested by an organization. Next is performance degradation. You can build a model and train it today and deploy it. And then a week from now, it could be potentially riddled with issues. And this is due to the degradation in the data from what you have deployed and what real life has ultimately led us to. It is not a set it and forget it situation. It is an iterative situation. So you notice that as time, as time progresses, the real world, data, real world data may go this way and your model is still in this path. And that's what this graph is showing here is the probability as time uh, continues and that drift in your data. And the last thing I'd like to bring to attention is, you know, this is an exponential curve showing the availability of ML models today and the research papers and the amount of individual scientists that are putting out a lot of really good things that we can use in our ML journey. But the challenge here is which one of these do you want to use and how are you, how do you know that this is the right one? When something changes, what do you need to know to roll back? And model prol proliferation is a challenge and it needs to be managed properly or again, the end result as an organization can be very uh, upsetting. Now that you understand all the pain points in a much better way, we are here to share, share with you that it's not all doom and gloom. There are technologies out there which actually address those problems. Apache Airflow is definitely one of them. So in order to prepare for this presentation, we talked to over a dozen customers in order to understand how they are using Airflow and leveraging it to solve those problems. And we also tried to understand what other technologies that they are orchestrating with Airflow in order to solve for these things. So in the next few slides, we'll go over some of the different pipeline patterns and all that customers are building and the technologies that they are using in order to solve these problems. And then you'll get an idea about how you can actually go back and in your production environment solve these problems as well. One thing to note, because we talked to AWS customers, you would see that there is a slight more bias towards AWS technologies because that's what our customers were using. But similar technologies are, being, are available from other cloud providers or independent providers. So you can, of course, go and use those. So, just to start, for those unfamiliar, Apache Airflow is an or open source orchestration platform which is meant for orchestrating data processing pipelines as well as run complex computational workloads. And it, it comes with a lot of features. Some of them we have listed here. So first of, first of them being dependency management. Airflow allows you to define what tasks should run first and what tasks should run after those. This is very crucial for any MLOps pipeline because you want to run you want to run the data preparation and processing workflows before your model monit model training pipelines, model training task. The second thing is Airflow supports scheduling and event-driven workflows. Airflow provides you a way that you can run the workflows at a given time every week so that you can do retraining every week. Or Airflow allows you to also run event-driven workflows where when the new data set comes in, you can train your model again you know, based on the new data, or you can run inference on the new data that has arrived in your S3 bucket or in your data warehouse. Airflow also comes with thousands of pre-built integrations. These integrations make it very easy to build end-to-end -end ML pipelines. We have Amazon provider package for integration with AWS services, but there are integrations for Databricks, Snowflake, MLflow for 
weights and biases, et cetera. So there are all these integrations available that make it easy for you to construct your data, your ML pipeline very easily rather than worrying about, okay, what API I should be using, how I should be using that API. You can directly use those pre-built operators. Then Airflow also supports native monitoring and alar alarming. So if you have some pipelines that has failed, you can go back and actually look at, okay, which were the tasks that failed. You can run those tasks specifically. This makes it very easy, especially for ML pipelines, because you don't want to run the training and everything all over again. Airflow allows you to run the failed workflows from the point it failed, and via XCOM and all, if you have passed in some data, it will use those data to run those pipelines again with the parameters that were passed. And then as your organization grows, as your ML in initiatives grow, you want an orchestration engine that scales with you. Airflow pro provides a scaling by design. Uh, it allows you to run multiple schedulers. It allows you to run multiple web servers. You can scale the number of workers. So you can easily scale the compute in your orchestration engine as your ML initiatives grow. Now let's look at some of the patterns that, that we saw customers using with Airflow. One of the common things is that we noticed that customers were already having the pipelines to bring in data from different sources into their warehouse within Airflow. Now it's very easy to add data quality checks on top of these pipelines. For example, in this pipeline, we're basically processing the data via glued job and then running the quality checks using great expectations operator, doing some balancing via Athena query and then loading it into a Snowflake for further use for model training and other things. Now, what we saw customers using for data wrangling and data processing was primarily SageMaker, but we are also seeing like a lot of customers. I think Glue is one of our top most uses. We see a lot of customers run Spark workloads via Airflow for processing data. And Spark is definitely Databricks, EMR, and Glue are the usual suspects there. And then for data quality, we saw customers using great expectations primarily, but we are also seeing increased usage of Glue data quality as well as Soda. And the next slide will show you how the how you can easily integrate Glue data quality with operator. So in the first task, you're basically creating rule sets for your different table and database. And in the next task is what you will run repeatedly where you're running these rule sets, you're running these evaluations every time new data comes in. And what these rule sets were ranging from were mainly record counts, the validness checks, the completeness checks to ensure that there is always non-null data and then standard deviation boundaries if you want to set in for your data. Now, Glue data quality also provides you rule set recommendation where you can provide the data, the table and database that you have and Glue will look at your column statistics and generate rule sets for you automatically based on the historical data that has come. Now, in this, we are still adding these operators. In Airflow 3, it will become further easier. We are introducing the concept of assets with by making Airflow more data aware. And in those assets will allow you to provide asset validation checks as well. And those validation checks will basically run on your data sets. You don't have to add them to the pipelines as well. The next is now that you have prepared data and you have processed data, you want to train your model. And Airflow again makes it super easy to train the model to log the evaluation and the different accuracy and precision results via different platforms, and then register the model using other SageMaker, like SageMaker registry or something like that. For model training, we saw customers using SageMaker definitely is quite popular in Databricks, but we are also seeing increased usage of Bedrock for fine tuning LLM models. And for model cataloging, we saw weights and biases, like the customers that we talked to, they, they vouched for weights and biases because of the ease of the UI, and like ease of use, but it, it does get costly. So other customers were using the managed services of MLflow from Databricks and SageMaker recently launched MLflow uh, managed service as well. And then lastly, people were, some folks were using Neptune as well. And just to give you an idea how MLflow looks like and how it can help with experiment tracking, it's basically you are running experiments with different hyperparameters and you can compare those experiments with their accuracy, precision and all. It provides you graph and once you've identified, okay, this is the model that I like, you can actually register them within the MLflow platform as well. And later, if you can go to, in this, we are showing, it's hard to read, but it's like random forest model and you can go different versions, version one, two, three, four, and then version 10, what was the accuracy like so that you know 
the model that you are in production, that you are using in production, what is the actual accuracy of that model? You can go back and see how does it perform and are, is my model performance improving or not? One thing I miss, I should have added my referral code so that if you use MLflow and others, Amazon can give me some bonus. <laughs> For evaluation and monitoring, we, we saw customers basically using Evidently or SageMaker for running the inference pipeline and then detecting actual model performance drift over time. And then Ragas is getting popular for running LLM drag evaluation. And for notifications, like once you know that actually model performance has degraded over time, you want to get notified. And you, Airflow allows you to easily integrate with where your, use, where your developers are. So if your organization uses Slack, then you can get Slack notification or you can get email notification. Airflow has pre-built integrations for all of these. And as the model performance degrades, you, you evaluate the performance. These pipelines, generally what customers were doing were running every week. And that way they can see, okay, is, is my model performance has gone down? If it has gone down, we send the Slack alerts with the latest performance. Last but not the least, what we saw customer facing was not scaling challenges due to computation. People were facing mostly scaling challenges in spreading the culture of AI ML ops across their organization. The customers that we talked to, even when they were large enterprises, they were still kind of in the face of bringing ML ops as a culture in their org. They were not quite there yet. And some of the customers were quite far ahead and what they were using were like things like DAG templating and DAG factory to create templates for training and deployment pipelines, for monitoring pipelines and inference pipelines so that once you have these templates, you can easily parameterize them and you can run them the same pipelines for different models like churn prediction or lifetime value prediction. And if you attended Apple, like the, the talk from folks from Apple, they were using paper mill operator for parameterizing notebooks as well. So it's like you can run different notebooks with the same pipeline with different parameters. And Airflow make, provides data-driven scheduling, which makes it very easy to have your teams loosely coupled and define these loosely coupled dependency where your data engineering team can build pipelines for data preparation, for bringing in data, and then once the data has arrived, you can actually run the model training and inference pipeline. And once the training is done, you've deployed the model, you can run the inference pipeline. So you don't have to write these giant DAGs where all the logic is there. You can actually divide your workflows into micro pipelines and run these pipelines and define these dependencies between different teams. So I'll uh, be really quick and talk about uh, two uh, success stories that we kind of pulled in just specifically just for this presentation. First one I had mentioned when we were talking about the businesses earlier on, and this is Jumio. And what they do is they specialize in identity verification, and they work with you know clients in the financial, healthcare, and gambling industry. They do. They also do biometric analysis as well, too. So, you know, based on what Shivam had said in terms of the solutions that uh, he had gone through there with Airflow, their challenges is no different than a lot of other organizations. You have people, data scientists, engineers, ML ops, DevOps, a bunch of different people that play a large part in the whole ML ops uh, pipeline. You have technologies, whether, you know, you're writing DAGs in, in Python and Airflow, or you know your data scientists are doing you know, uh, model adjustments with uh, Jupyter notebooks, or or whatever sort of technologies you're pulling in for data ingestion or analytics or processing, and then uh, governance were some of their challenges as well too. Being able to look at uh, pipeline versioning, looking at data quality, and uh, looking at you know model evaluation, you know post uh, deployment and so forth. And what some of their solutions, again, it's not going to stray too far from the answer being Airflow. They do use it to uh, pretty much uh, navigate through all of their pipelines, the, the whole data ingestion to model deployment. Uh, they um, should them talk about templating. Uh, templating is their, one of their mechanisms they've used to sort of create a standardization across all the different working groups, your scientists and the engineers, uh, to keep them all in the same language on the same page. And then lastly, Data Hub. Uh, being used as a tool for them for to help assist with governance. And the uh, last one, I'll be really quick in this. I wouldn't uh, dive too deep in this as uh, there is going to be a presentation on Thursday at 11 
uh, by Udit, and uh, he's going to dive a lot more into ASAP. But ASAP is uh, an industry leader in uh, Gen AI for uh, like a contact center. So, you know, your chat bots, transcriptions and summarizations of uh, conversations. And again, again, typical challenges with uh, uh, the AI journey, the, the entire ML life, uh, life cycle is, is part of that and the technologies. And no different than the previous one, Airflow being that solution, kind of tying all of those pipelines together uh, for training and evaluation of the models. And then one really cool thing that they do for parallel workloads is that, you know, they'll have a DAG that will spit up a multitude of clusters to handle every instance of an inference. And that's their way of handling all the models that they have in their pipelines. So that pretty much takes us to the end.